all about Princess Diana. She didn't know it at the time, but the moment she met James Hewitt, her life changed forever. Tonight, the real story about the relationship that drove a wedge between Diana and the royal family, and the bombshell that hangs over the monarchy still to this day. What did you think you were getting into when you two started your relationship? It was a friendship, and then it developed into a love affair. She was no saint, was she? It was one of the biggest mistakes of my life. She was betrayed, you had sold her out, the role Camilla Parker Bowles played in Diana's life. Of hypocrisy. Do you think Charles should be king? Am I really, am I really entitled to opinion about it? There's one thing I have to ask you. Don't ask it. Prince Harry's father. November 1995, and the wife of England's future king was about to confess an act of high treason. Did your relationship go beyond a close friendship? Yes, it did. Yes. Were you unfaithful? Yes, I adored him. Yes, I was in love with him. But I was very let down. Her lover was Major James Hewitt, an officer, but in the eyes of England, certainly not a gentleman. He literally rode into Diana's life, becoming her personal horse riding instructor. A graduate of Sandhurst, the prestigious military academy that turned out men like Winston Churchill and James Bond creator Ian Fleming, Hewitt was part hero, part playboy. I mean, did you think it was just going to be a harmless fling? It was a friendship that grew and grew because two people got on very well and enjoyed each other's company. Um, and even in the beginning, I, I was unaware of the extent of her unhappiness in her marriage. It developed into a friendship and then it developed into a love affair. But what did you think you were doing? What did you two think you were doing, given that she was married well, to I the man? I knew what I was doing. I was giving um, uh, friendship and comfort and love to somebody who was looking for that. What were you getting? Well, I don't think that matters, really. I mean, you don't look at everything and decide, what am I going to get out of this, do you? You do things for selfless reasons occasionally. There was a strong sense of the protector and the guardian in your attitude towards her. There was only one person that could have provided that to her at the time, and that was me. There were millions who were there to protect the Queen and, you know, England and all that it stands for. Um, And so I chose to help someone who I thought was uh, unlikely to achieve that elsewhere. So did you think in the early days that your heart was safe? Yes, I did. Yes. When did you realise that it wasn't? You know, when I started to fall in love. What year the love affair began remains a matter of hot debate. Some commentators say it was as early as 1984, fueling speculation that Hewitt is the biological father of Diana's second son, Prince Harry. We put that question to Hewitt, his answer in a moment. But ten years on from Harry's birth, it was crystal clear that the affair between his mother and the Gulf War veteran had ended badly. With the princess's lover, hope to make a small fortune. She had a dark side and she could be quite manipulative. She was no saint, was she? No, I think she'd be the first to admit that. Did she manipulate you? Do you think I could be manipulated? Don't know, I've only known you for about half an hour. I have no idea. I think that she learnt how to handle the press and she learnt how to become her own spin doctor. She, yes, I mean, she wasn't a saint and she did have her faults and I think that's part of her attraction and her beauty. A trait that turned out to be fatal for their relationship. Before the affair became public knowledge, Diana had convinced Hewitt they could head off the rumours if he took part in a British newspaper interview and spun the line that they were just friends. And it was one of the biggest mistakes of my life, really, because it opened the floodgates. And I should have shut up. I shouldn't have given the interview at all. But Diana had wanted you to, hadn't she? Yes, that doesn't make it right. The floodgates.
floodgates had indeed opened. The journalist Hewitt was interviewed by talked him into collaborating on an explosive kiss and tell book that would rock the royal family. It was simply called Princess in Love. I just thought it might manage to mend a few things and put things in a different light and be written about in a more sympathetic way. Do you mean for you to be written about in a more sympathetic way? Correct. Did you tell Diana that you had told Anna Pasternak the full story of your relationship? Yes, I did. So why, in that Panorama interview, why did she say that she was betrayed, that she felt that you had made money out of her, that you had sold her out? I'm not sure if she used those words. She said that you had betrayed her trust and you'd made money out of it. I do know that she gave the interview um, to try and win back a certain amount of public sympathy which was lost. The Pasternak book was a turning point for you. I mean, you suddenly became public enemy number one, didn't you? I mean, I didn't really know what I was letting myself in for, no. And so when D Diana then came out, having known that you were collaborating in this book and said that you'd betrayed her trust and let her down, wasn't that another knife? Yeah, possibly. Did you think you deserved it? I think I deserve an awful lot of criticism but, um, and, um, uh, and venom, but um, probably not on that occasion, no. Hewitt's public image took a battering. He'd made millions from the book and newspaper deals, but he still hadn't hit rock bottom. That would come two years after Diana's death, when he considered selling her love letters for a reported $10 million. Why did you decide to sell her love letters? You must have known you were going to get a hiding place. I decided to sell them. They're still in my possession. You went on Larry King and yeah. CNN and said that they were for sale. I said, had, any, had I been offered any money for them, I might think about it. They're mine to do with what I want to do with them, and I'll be damned if I'm going to be told otherwise. But they, they, were, they were love letters. They were private. They, they were between the two of you. Nothing's for sale. Today, James Hewitt has moved to Spain to find peace. It's more than 20 years since he first met Diana and 10 years since she died. He was here in Marbella when that happened. It wasn't far away from where we're sitting now, actually, um, staying in a friend's house. And um, I'd left my phone in the room being recharged, and I thought, well, I don't know, something made me go to get it and um, turn it on and I had about 20 messages, voicemail messages um, and so I thought that's very strange and um, so I started to listen to them and that's how I heard about the news. It was just a complete and utter shock. Were you close at the time that she died? We weren't as close as we, we were or had been um, but uh, close enough to be able to speak on the telephone. When was the last time you talked? a few months before she was killed. And when I last spoke to her, um, she said, I'm going to shock the world and go off with some big, fat black man. Um, but that was the way that she would like to shock people. I mean, she didn't work with me. You've said that she was the love of your life and, and you were always going to love her. Were you a little envious that they were living a life that you two had sort of fantasised about living, being able to go out publicly, date, be seen, be open? Mm, was I jealous? No. I was pleased for her. I was pleased that she had achieved what she had set out to achieve when she found herself to be in an unhappy situation with Charles. Hewitt wasn't invited to Diana's memorial, but he was certainly amazed at one inclusion on the guest list. There's been a lot of uh, talk in the press about uh, Camilla Parker Bowles' plans to go to the memorial, which have now been shelved. Do you have an opinion about that? I'm amazed that the decision to go was made in the first place. Yeah, I think it's an appalling advice. What sort of message do you think it would have sent had she gone? I think one of hypocrisy. Because of the role Camilla Parker Bowles played in Diana's life? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you think that... Charles should be king? <laughs> it's certainly not up to me. Um, You're entitled to an opinion about it. You're closer really, to it than most people. Am I really entitled to an opinion about it? 
even if I had an opinion, it wouldn't make an ounce jot of difference. The flash of anger fades as the topic changes to the other princes, William and Harry. Instead, we're treated to a touching insight into his relationship with the young boys and their mother. He read bedtime stories to the young princes. How did she explain you to them? I've often thought about that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what they think now. Um, I reckon they know think? now. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they live in quite a different situation to what you and I may be used to. I mean, it's oh, very strange being in a boy's room, a young boy's room, having a pillow fight. I'm mean, used to a prep school, but you don't, unless it's your own child or a member of the family, do that. But it seemed quite natural. Although, you know, it turned out that somebody did cry. Didn't you whack one of the boys on the nose or I something? I might have, actually. I think I, I really... might eventually end up in the Tower of London with my head chopped off. <laughs> I think it was William that you bonked William on the nose with the pillow. I think that's a dreadful thing for me to recount. I really do. <laughs> But it was only by way of an example of what a strange sort of situation it was. His fondness for the princes is deep and genuine. And that brings us to the one question everyone else in the world wants him to answer. They share a striking similarity in looks. So let's find out. Is James Hewitt the father of Prince Harry? There is one... There's one thing I have to ask you that <laughs> you're not going to like, but do you think that you are ever? Ask it. <laughs> do you think that you will ever manage to convince people that you are not Prince Harry's father? I don't know. Because it's a. You're going to persist on this, aren't you? <laughs> Well, it's just such a hard thing to put to rest, isn't it? I've been trying to put to rest all sorts of things. And, um, you know, some ways have been right and some ways have been wrong. Hopefully, the majority have been right. You know, I don't know if, if, it, if it's worked. We'll see in a few years. What's your fondest memory of Diana? When I see her in, a, in, in, in my mind's eye, I just see her blue eyes and her face and, um, and the way that she could just completely captivate the spirit, the moment, the time, the laughter, the joy um, and the sadness as well. Um, and that's it in, in one little oval frame like that.